The history of women in engineering predates the development of the profession of engineering. Before engineering was recognized as a formal profession, women with engineering skills often sought recognition as inventors, such as Hypatia of Alexandria 350 or 370 ad, who is credited with the invention of the hydrometer. During the Islamic Golden Period from the 8th century until the 15th century there were many Muslim women who were inventors and engineers, such as the 10th century astronomer Maryam al astrolabi In the 19th century, women who performed engineering work often had academic training in mathematics or science, although many of them were still not eligible to graduate with a degree in engineering, like Ada Lovelace or Hertha Marx Ayrton. Rita de Moraes Sarmento was one of the first women in Europe to be certified with an academic degree in engineering in 1896. In the USA at the University of California, Berkeley, however, both Elizabeth Bragg 1876 and Julia Morgan 1894 already had received their bachelor's degree in that field. In the early years of the 20th century, a few women were admitted to engineering programs, but they were generally looked upon as curiosities by their male counterparts. Alice Perry 1906 and Elisa Leonida Zamfirescu 1912 were some of the first European to graduate with a degree in engineering. The entry of the United States into World War II created a serious shortage of engineering talent as men were drafted into the armed forces. The GE on the Job Engineering Training for Women with Degrees in Mathematics and Physics, and the Curtis Wright Engineering Program had Curtis Wright Cadets. Engineering Cadets, e.g., Rosella Fenton. The company partnered with Cornell, Penn State, Purdue, the University of Minnesota, the University of Texas, RPI, and Iowa State University to create an engineering curriculum that eventually enrolled over 600 women. The course lasted 10 months and focused primarily on aircraft design and production. Kathleen McNulty, 1921-2006, was selected to be one of the original programmers of the ENIAC. Georgia Tech began to admit women engineering students in 1952. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology MIT, had graduated its first female student, Ellen Swallow Richards, 1842-1911, in 1873. The École Polytechnique in Paris first began to admit women students in 1972. The number of B.A., B.S. degrees in engineering awarded to women in the U.S. increased by 45% between 1980 and 1994. However, from 1984 to 1994, the number of women graduating with a B.A. or B.S. degree in computer science decreased by 23%. Topic. Terminology Although the terms engineer and engineering date from the Middle Ages, they acquired their current meaning and usage only recently in the 19th century. Briefly, an engineer is one who uses the principles of engineering, namely acquiring and applying scientific, mathematical, economic, social, and practical knowledge, in order to design and build structures, machines, devices, systems, materials and processes. Some of the major branches of the engineering profession include civil engineering, military engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, aerospace engineering, computer engineering, and biomedical engineering. Topic: <inaudible> Inventors. Before engineering was recognized as a formal profession, women with engineering skills often sought recognition as inventors. One of the earliest women inventors was Hypatia of Alexandria 350. 370, minus 415, who is credited with the invention of the hydrometer. Tabitha Babbitt 1784-1853, was an American toolmaker who invented the first circular saw. Sarah Guppy (1770–1852) was an Englishwoman who patented a design for bridge foundations. Mary Dixon Kice (1752–1837) was the first American woman to receive a patent for her method of weaving straw in 1809. Topic: 
19th century entry into technical professions With the coming of the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century, new technology-based occupations opened up for both men and women. Sarah Bagley 1806, is remembered not only for her efforts to improved working conditions for women mill workers in Lowell, Massachusetts, in the 1830s and 1840s, but also for being one of the earliest women to work as a telegraph operator. Matilda Feibiger (1830–1872), a Danish novelist and advocate of women's rights, became a telegraph operator for the Danish state telegraph system in the 1860s. Engineering began to be taught as a formal academic discipline in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. The École Polytechnique in France was established in 1794 to teach military and civil engineering. West Point Military Academy in the United States established a program modeled after the École Polytechnique in 1819. Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute (RPI) began to teach civil engineering in 1828. However, none of these institutions admitted women as students at the time of their founding. In the 19th century, women who performed engineering work often had academic training in mathematics or science. Ada Lovelace (1815–1852), Lord Byron's daughter, was privately schooled in mathematics before beginning the collaboration with Charles Babbage on his analytical engine that would earn her the designation of the first computer programmer. Hertha Marx Ayrton (1854–1923), a British engineer and inventor who helped develop electric arc lighting, studied mathematics at Cambridge in 1880, but was denied a degree, as women were only granted certificates of completion at the time. Therefore, moving to the University of London, which granted her a Bachelor of Science degree in 1881. Similarly, Mary Engel Pennington (1872–1952), an American chemist and refrigeration engineer, completed the requirements for a B.S. degree in chemistry at the University of Pennsylvania in 1892, but was given a certificate of proficiency instead. Elizabeth Bragg and Julia Morgan became the first women to receive a bachelor's degree in engineering, by the University of California, Berkeley, USA, in Civil Engineering 1876 and Mechanical Engineering 1894. In the same year of Morgan's accomplish, Bertha Lamb was also graduated from Ohio State University in Mechanical Engineering. Rita de Morais Sarmento (1872–1931) was the first woman to obtain an engineering degree in Europe. She has enrolled at the Academia Politecnica do Porto to study civil engineers of public works, which she concluded with various distinctions in 1894. Two years later, she was granted with the Civil Engineering Certificate of Capability. To practice as a professional engineer, despite she would never do it, which means she was the first formally and fully recognized European female engineer. Other women in engineering in the same time period include three Danish women, Agnes Klingberg, Betsy Meyer, and Julie Ehrenholt, who graduated from 1897 to 1901, at the Polytechnisk Lorienstal, today known as the Danmarks Tekniske Universitet. Women without formal engineering degrees were also integral to great 19th century civil engineering feats. Emily Warren Roebling is recognized as managing the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge, and was the first person to cross the bridge at its opening ceremony in 1883. Roebling's husband, Washington Roebling, worked as the chief engineer for the Brooklyn Bridge project until he fell ill of decompression sickness. Upon her husband's illness, Emily Warren Roebling assumed her husband's duties at the project site, and taught herself about material properties, cable construction, calculating catenary curves and other subjects. Topic. 20th century, entry into engineering programs In the early years of the 20th century, a few women were admitted to engineering programs, but they were generally looked upon as curiosities by their male counterparts. Nora Stanton Blatch Barney 1883 daughter of Harriet Stanton Blatch and granddaughter of Elizabeth Cady Stanton, was the first woman to receive a degree in civil engineering from Cornell University in 1905. 
In the same year, she was accepted as a junior member of the American Society of Civil Engineers. However, 12 years later, after having worked as an engineer, architect, and engineering inspector, her request for an upgrade to associate membership was denied. Olive Dennis 1885 who became the second woman to graduate from Cornell with a civil engineering degree in 1920, was initially hired by the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad as a draftsman, however, she later became the first person to claim the title of service engineer when this title was created. Cleone Benest passed the City and Guilds of London Institute's Motor Engineering Examination, the Royal Automobile Club's Mechanical Test in 1908 and took the Portsmouth Municipal College Examination for Heat Engines in 1910. Using the professional name of C. Griff, she joined several engineering organizations and established a consultancy business in Mayfair. Alice Perry S. One of the first formally recognized female engineers in Europe, graduated with a degree in engineering in 1908 from Queen's College, Galway. Elisa Leonida Zamfirescu (1887–1973), due to prejudices against women in the sciences, was rejected by the School of Bridges and Roads in Bucharest, Romania. However, in 1909, she was accepted at the Royal Academy of Technology in Berlin. She graduated from the university in 1912, with a degree in engineering, specializing in chemistry, possibly becoming one of the first women engineers in the world. Edith Clark, the inventor of the graphical calculator, was the first woman to earn a degree in MIT's electrical engineering department in 1918. Clark also became the first woman admitted to the American Institute of Electrical Engineers, the precursor to the IEEE. She taught at the University of Texas Austin, where she was the only woman faculty member in the engineering department. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> World War II Engineering Programs for Women. The entry of the United States into World War II created a serious shortage of engineering talent as men were drafted into the armed forces at the same time that industry ramped up production of armaments, battleships, and airplanes. The U.S. Office of Education initiated a series of courses in science and engineering that were open to women as well as men. Private programs for women included GE on the job engineering training for women with degrees in mathematics and physics, and the Curtis Wright Engineering Program had Curtis Wright cadets e.g., Rosella Fenton. The company partnered with Cornell, Penn State, Purdue, the University of Minnesota, the University of Texas, RPI, and Iowa State University to create an engineering curriculum that eventually enrolled over 600 women. The course lasted 10 months and focused primarily on aircraft design and production. Thelma Estrin, 1924 to 2014, who would later become a pioneer in the fields of computer science and biomedical engineering, took a 1942 three-month engineering assistant course at Stevens Institute of Technology and earned University of Wisconsin BSc, MSc, and PhD degrees through an accelerated program brought on by the war. Lois Graham, 1920 to 2013, graduated from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in 1946 and was the first woman in the United States to receive a Ph.D. in mechanical engineering from Illinois Institute of Technology, M.S. Me, 49, Ph.D. 59. Topic: <laughs> Post-war era. In 1943, the United States Army authorized a secret project at the University of Pennsylvania's Moore School of Electrical Engineering to develop an electronic computer to compute artillery firing tables for the Army's Ballistic Research Laboratory. The project, which came to be known as ENIAC, or Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer, was completed in 1946. Previous to the development of the ENIAC, the U.S. Army had employed women trained in mathematics to calculate artillery trajectories, at first using mechanical desk calculators and later the differential analyzer developed by Vannevar Bush, at the Moore School. In 1945, one of these computers 
Kathleen McNulty (1921–2006) was selected to be one of the original programmers of the ENIAC, together with Frances Spence (1922), Betty Holberton (1917–2001), Marlon Wescoff, Ruth Lichterman (1924–1986), and Betty Jean Jennings (1924–2011). McNulty, Holberton, and Jennings would later work on the UNIVAC, the first commercial computer developed by the Remington Rand Corporation in the early 1950s. In 1946, Hattie Scott Peterson gained a degree in civil engineering, believed to be the first African-American woman to do so. Topic. Resistance to coeducation in engineering schools, 1950s to 1970s The Cold War and the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union created additional demands for trained engineering talent in the 1950s and 1960s. Many engineering schools in the U.S. that had previously admitted only male students began to tentatively adopt coeducation. After 116 years as an all-male institution, RPI began to admit small numbers of female students in the 1940s. Georgia Tech began to admit women engineering students in 1952, but only in programs not available in other state universities. It would be 1968 before women were admitted to all courses offered by Georgia Tech. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology (MIT) had graduated its first female student, Ellen Swallow Richards (1842–1911). In 1873, she later became an instructor at MIT. However, until the 1960s, MIT enrolled few female engineering students, due in part to a lack of housing for women students. After the completion of the first women's dormitory on campus, McCormick Hall, in 1964, the number of women enrolled increased greatly. Influenced in part by the second-wave feminism movement of the late 1960s and 1970s, female faculty members at MIT, including Mildred Dresselhaus and Sheila Widnall, began to actively promote the cause of women's engineering education. The École Polytechnique in Paris first began to admit women students in 1972. Margaret Hamilton is also notable for her contributions to computer and aerospace engineering in the 1970s. Hamilton, the director of the Software Engineering Division of the MIT Instrumentation Laboratory at the time, is famous for her work in writing the onboard guidance code for the Apollo 11 mission. Topic: 1980s to 1990s. As more engineering programs were opened to women, the number of women enrolled in engineering programs increased dramatically. The number of B.A., B.S. degrees in engineering awarded to women in the U.S. increased by 45% between 1980 and 1994. However, during the period of 1984 to 1994, the number of women graduating with a BA, BS degree in computer science decreased by 23% from 37% of graduates in 1984 to 28% in 1994. This phenomenon became known as the incredible shrinking pipeline. From the title of a 1997 paper on the subject by Dr. Tracy Camp, a professor in the Department of Mathematical and Computer Sciences at the Colorado School of Mines, some of the reasons for the decline cited in the paper included The development of computer games designed and marketed for males only A perception that computer science was the domain of hacker, nerd, antisocial personality types Gender discrimination in computing Lack of role models at the university level Topic. Statistics Topic. United States 
According to studies by the National Science Foundation, the percentage of BA, BS degrees in engineering awarded to women in the U.S. increased steadily from 0.4% in 1966 to a peak of 20.9% in 2002, and then dropped off slightly to 18.5% in 2008. However, the trend identified in the incredible shrinking pipeline has continued, the percentage of BA, BS degrees in mathematics and computer science awarded to women peaked in 1985 at 39.5%, and declined steadily to 25.3% in 2008. The percentage of master's degrees in engineering awarded to women increased steadily from 0.6% in 1966 to 22.9% in 2008. The percentage of doctoral degrees in engineering awarded to women during the same period increased from 0.3% to 21.5%. Australia Only 9.6% of engineers in Australia are women, and the rate of women in engineering degree courses has remained around 14% since the 1990s. <laughs> United Kingdom The percentage of female and technology engineering graduates rose from 7% in 1984 to 14.6% in 2018. The proportion of engineers in industry who are women is, on the other hand, still very low at around 11.8% the lowest percentage in the EU. Topic. Initiatives to promote engineering to women Women in Engineering Proactive Network Anita Borg Institute for Women and Technology Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing Robogals Women in SET Women in Technology International The Society of Women Engineers Women's Engineering Society Alpha Omega Epsilon WISE, Women into Science, Engineering, and Construction WEPAN, Women in Engineering Proactive Network Inc. WE, Women in Engineering Network Topic. See also Women in Engineering List of prizes, medals, and awards for women in engineering Category, Women in Technology Women in Computing Women in Science Women in the Workforce Joyce Curry Little, The Role of Women in the History of Computing Proceedings, Women and Technology, Historical, Societal, and Professional Perspectives IEEE International Symposium on Technology and Society, New Brunswick, NJ, July 1999, 20205.